Good afternoon, everyone. Today I would like to talk about how the media purposefully tries to dissuade you from even considering that cycles on the sun affect our weather on this planet. I want to dissect a article from the Guardian Limited. After you see all the graphs and information presented, you'll definitely have a different understanding of, of how the media uses generalizations, random causations to try to get you to discount any other possible explanation. And as you may or may not be aware of, there has been a pause in any type of warming for the last 18 years. Now let's take a look further into the article here. I've highlighted in blue the specific wording that I'm talking about that will cause you to question anything other than CO2 effects as a driver for climate change on the planet. The study's authors say that there's been a 0.2 Celsius gap between models to predict warming and actual observed warming since 2001. This is the model versus observation. Observation means real world on the ground what's happening measurements compared to the models that the IPCC frequently references in their white papers. As you can clearly see there's a divergence here between what was predicted in the upper black lines and what is actually the conditions on the ground if you will. That's the green, red, and yellow circles. Also the article claims that the accelerating trade winds are driving heat into the oceans and allowing the oceans to soak up the additional heat and you'll notice right away that the climate models are over double what the actual observed warming is. And if it is driving heat into the oceans, that blue line at the end on the right side at 2015 should not be showing a downward trend. It should be spiking upward if there's additional heat trapped in the ocean. It shouldn't be cooling. So there, again, is an oppositional fact. We can see it further in the sea surface temperature anomalies here. Notice the same thing, that there's a cooling trend going on. It should be increasing to around the 1997 levels if that extra heat is actually being absorbed by the oceans. Now you notice the same thing with the land temperature data as well. It's, it's peaked and it's decreasing. That's both ocean surface temperatures and land surface temperatures on the decline. Now this particular sentence, there's a true and a false in it. The Earth is going through a solar minimum. That is true but 90% of the world's extra heat is not being absorbed by the oceans. We are heading into a grand solar minimum at this time. We will repeat on this earth something that was experienced in the early 1800s in the Dalton minimum or something in the 1640s such as the Maunder minimum where temperatures across the planet dropped one and a half to two degrees Celsius, affected food production, mass migrations of citizens across the planet, starvation, Another sentence here, while the solar minimum and aerosol particles have contributed to the slowdown, this is the volcanic eruption history from early 1600s to now. During the last two grand solar minimums, there was a direct correlation between the number of volcanic eruptions, the amount of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, and you can clearly see that we're on an uptrend again here. Here's an interesting thing that they quote in the article, Pacific trade winds have been twice as strong in the past 20 years compared with the prior 80. I would disagree on that. Let's take a look. This is the equatorial Pacific trade wind. The northeast, this is from 0 degrees to 8 degrees north and 180 to 120 degrees east longitude. You'll notice each the southeast, the northwest, the southwest. And if trade winds were double, it should look something like 1996 spiking back up. but as you can see, it's also on a linear trend going down. There's no spike and no doubling of Pacific trade winds to drive that additional heat into the waters. And then the last sentence, greenhouses will certainly win out in the end. No global warming for 18 years in one month. This is a nice overlay of the IPCC models that are far above the actual observed temperatures. The colored lines are the IPCC models. The black is where we actually are now than what's actually being observed. So the models are, are wrong so far. And I almost fell over in my chair and started laughing when I saw this. That the pauses in the rate of global warming are to be expected. Now here is a graphic of 73 different IPCC models. Nowhere in these models does 
it show there's an expected cooling trend. In addition, 72 of those of the 73 are completely off base and have no correlation to what's really happening. And I don't know why the IPCC continues to use these defunct models that have not worked. Why would you consider and continue using something that's broken that hasn't worked since 1995? Yet they keep citing all this to try to get us to tax ourselves and bring in a global tax on everything we consume on faulty models. What's happening on the ground is completely divergent from the models. And then in the next paragraph it says, the oceans have continued to warm unabated. Again, I will disagree. Let's take a look. Bob Tisdale has some great research here. And as you'll notice, the red warming model is the IPCC, but the real data warming trend that we can see, how's the IPCC off by three times on this again? The following paragraph, a decade or two of slower or faster warming does not tell us anything about the long-term climate change. What? This is what the entire charade of global warming was about, is they had a few decades of information, what, going back to the late 1950s, early 1960s, and then extrapolating that out with the amount of CO2 purported to cause warming. And this was going out to 2100 and then 2200, and they were making claims for hundreds of years based on a couple of decades of information. That's just completely contradictory right there, that statement. And then another paragraph says, research suggests that when the trade winds weaken again, the planet can expect rapid warming. Okay, great. When is that going to happen? Well, let's look back to 1660 through 2015 and see the natural variations in the different indices across the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. These are natural trends. There were no cars factories back in 1600s to drive the climate up and down. The sun does that. This graphic here from the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, based on oxygen-18 isotopes. This goes back to 1480. Now look how many ups and downs there are in there. That's natural climate variability. The different cooling periods, those are sun-influenced, not human-influenced cooling or warming. This is a little bit more recent, from 1862, approximately today. This is 2013, although 2014 is trending cooler. And if indeed we are going into a, an increased warming period, that should not be on a downtrend from 2000 forward. And the final thing I'll leave you with here, we don't know what is causing the unprecedented changes, but the implications could be substantial. That I'll agree with. We're going into a colder trend, and, and we know this, the ramifications of loss of crop productions across the planet, it will have a significant impact on society. Food prices so high and out of reach that crime wave will just continue. People not really stealing goods such as your speakers or your stereo, but going into homes to raid for food, this would be significant. What we could expect are greater sea ice extent, just as we see here from the December 20th National Snow and Ice Data Center, downward trend in the solar cycles. Solar cycle 24, lower. Solar cycle 25 is predicted to be yet lower, bringing us into a grand solar minimum. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Always keep your eye on the media.